Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Hi guys. Mm. How are you? Doing? How are you? Oh, oh, are you? Look at it, Jenny. Hey. You feel what it is, Jenny? He got a sport coat of slacks on. Now this is not your normal ensemble. Now don't talk about oh, I come like this all the time. Sport coat of slacks, huh, Skip? Somebody huh. pays really <laughs> close attention to what somebody else is wearing. <laughs> And beat. somebody on this side never even yes. notices what somebody uh, on that side got a side new little outfit. Right? Guess yeah. what? It's, it's going an up. old outfit. No, it's old. It's old. It old. old. Ain't nobody seen that one before. You're but it's going to end up like day. it's going to end up like the old ones with defeat. Covered in defeat. I'm feeling really good. No, yeah, that's feeling okay. good is Super a good Bowl. sign. Here we go. Oh. Boy, we're yeah, jumping we are going to the, We are going for, to Miami. We are going to be there. I don't know about uh, his team. We'll see about that. Pack show, guys. Is Tom Brady more marketable than reigning MVP? Pat Mahomes, Shannon. And Eric Dickerson tells us who he thinks is the best running back in the league. But first, hey, Zeke Watch continues. Jerry Jones squashed any rumors that Zeke was recently offered any new deals yesterday during an interview with a local Dallas radio station. Jerry said there is nothing new to report with the negotiations. Jones also said that the team was prepared to play without certain players due to injury, suspension, or even a holdout. When asked if the Cowboys would need to lighten Zeke's load for week one, Jerry had this to say. Listen, uh, we've got a marathon here, and we want Zeke when we get to the playoffs. We want Zeke when we're in the uh, dog days of this season. And as you well know, you have to plan your personnel and you have to uh, manage uh, a player the caliber of Zeke. You have to, uh, as to what parts of the game you're using, how much rest you're using. And so uh, a fresh Zeke, as we got on into the end of the season, would be great. Hmm? Well, Shannon, how many games will Zeke miss during his holdout? Oh, Skip, what happened? What happened, Skip, to Tuesday? You know, you say you're not worried till Labor Day, right? <laughs> We're getting It's not your turn. Closer. It's not your turn. Is Labor Day? Not no, no, no. no. I, I must have overslept. I don't know. I believe he will miss a minimum of four games. <laughs> this doesn't sound like the positive Jerry Jones, Skip, the guys who said didn't, wouldn't use the word holdout. Zeke just hasn't reported yet. Mm -hmm. Remember, that was a big, big thing, Skip. He hasn't reported yet. This isn't a holdout. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you what Jerry said. Now, this is what Jerry said a couple of, couple of weeks ago. It's too good for them, and it's too good for the Cowboys. Let me say that again, Jenny. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's too good for them. It's too good for the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Now, we want a fresh Zeke when it comes playoffs time. Now, I just want you to know, Jerry, you've been very dismissive of these other teams. You automatically assuming that Skip Bayless hates that. Skip Bayless hates when someone says, oh, you like these other teams just going to lay down for you. Mm. Oh. It doesn't work that way. Now he says he wants to manage a player of Zeke's caliber. Yeah. You want to manage his load. Now, this is what he said back in 2016. The more we can give Ezekiel the ball, the better. Now you want to pay a guy X amount of dollars and lessen his load. Where do you get more money and do less work? Where do you do that at, Skip? I want that job. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love it. The only thing that's going to get these sides to move one way or another, and I believe Jerry Jones is doing this because he looked at the schedule and he says we have some very favorable matchups early on. Now, we know during the course of the year, there will be teams that you look at like uh, they're not going to be very good and they're better than you think. Mm -hmm. And there are some teams that you look at and you say, oh, they're going to be pretty good and they're not as good as you think. Jerry Jones is looking at the schedule, Skip. He's looking at like, uh, we got the Giants, no, not very good. We got Miami. Mm. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument, they had the Patriots, the Saints, the Eagles to start the season. I think we see Jerry Jones singing a little different tune. Mm. But he does not seem as positive mm. as he once did. Mm. These things get done. Mm. Oh, it's going to get done. Now he's talking about not a, a fresh Zeke come playoff time yep. wouldn't be such a bad thing. That doesn't sound like a guy that this deal is right around the corner. Mm. Because, <clears throat> mm. excuse me, as he said, there have been no movement. It's been reported that the Cowboys have not offered anything different than what they had at the beginning. Mm -mm. So Zeke, like, well, I'm not motivated to, to, to move. One thing is going to move the player or the team one way or another. Mm. The schedule. Mm. Mm.
the record. Mm -hmm. That's going to move the Cowboys or that's going to move Zeke. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. <sighs> Jenny, I got to tell you. Mm. What's up? I feel so sorry for my partner across the table. What are you feel sorry for, me? Sorry for yeah, him? I just feel so sorry. I'm I'm highly amused, but also feeling sorrier by the day for him <laughs> because he has become a puppet on the strings being pulled by my owner, Jerry mm -hmm. Jones. He has become a victim and a prisoner of, of Jerry's ever-changing, wildly erratic and misleading rhetoric. Because that's what Jerry's doing right now. He's negotiating. He's playing good cop with this comment and then bad cop with that comment. And Shannon is the puppet on the strings one way or the other. Shannon's 51. Mm. I can't carry the ball. He need to worry about that 24-year-old Zeke Elliott. Don't worry about me. I'm good over here. I'm going to reiterate one more time. Okay. Ezekiel Elliott will be in uniform and in the lineup for game one, signed, sealed, and delivered by Jerry Jones. I want 10 cases to do yeah. right now. Okay, 10 cases. You got it. 10 cases. Game, Skip one. game, game one. one. Game yeah. one. Game okay. one. Game one. You are wildly overreacting to what is just a classic negotiation. And the master negotiator that I have ever encountered in all my years of covering pro football or pro sports dating back to the 1970s is Gerald Wayne Jones Jr., mm -hmm. one Jerry Jones. This is what he does best. Jerry says a lot of dumb things, but he ain't stupid when it comes to managing the salary cap and negotiating contracts, playing the game, as I call it, of blink, as in who will blink first. Jerry does feel like he has some new advantage because he's no longer working without a safety net because he has had Tony, don't call me Mike Pollard, fall right into his lap, right straight out of the heaven. Boy. That is the fourth round for the Dallas Cowboys. He now has the Dak Prescott of running backs, Tony Pollard, the rookie, and he has seen enough, and Zach Martin, as we heard yesterday, has seen enough, and I told you early on, I've seen enough to say he is a quality NFL back. He is not Ezekiel Elliott, but they could win two games. They could probably go three and one in four games with Tony Pollard as the lead back, mm -hmm. as the bell cow back, as the between the tackles running back that he was underutilized as at Memphis. That was the coach's fault and Again, Will McClay. How, and Will know, how do you know that was the coach's fault? Well, Maybe he I'm, couldn't I, beat the other guys I what, up. I know what I saw when I watched Memphis play. This kid would flash. And Daryl Henderson was drafted in the third round by the Rams. Flash he was more. more of a battering ram, you know, between the tackles. Okay, good luck. So we'll see as the years wear on. We'll whoa, whoa, see whoa, whether the third rounder is better than the fourth rounder, yeah. won't we? You see what you did there? Well, I didn't do anything. Who's better, the third or the fourth rounder? Well, put Henderson with that offensive mm. line. Oh, well. There we go. Well, That's a big part of the equation. I'm talking Jerry's got that on his side, too. Okay, but Skip. Okay, Jerry also said, he said, Skip, he wants to manage Zeke's minutes and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to manage a guy's minutes. Let's just take basketball. They said, that, okay, when LeBron came back from energy, injury, they wanted him to play somewhere around 32 minutes. Okay, that's fine and good if you're blowing teams out. But what happened if you're up one, down one? And 32 minutes go to 36 minutes. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip Bayless, Zeke has 28 carries. And you need to run out the clock in the last five minutes. And you got a third and one. Tony Pollard carrying the ball? Mm. Huh? Oh, Absolutely. Skip you know, Bayless, stop playing he now. Said, he, he didn't ever carry the ball at Memphis. Good, he's fresh. He, he's, he's completely healthy. I can assure you, if Ezekiel Elliott is on the team, mm -hmm. Tony Pollard is not carrying the ball at 31. Sure, I agree. I told you from but, day one, Tony Pollard gives you a good 1A back, a backup back, who can split some care, share some of the load with Zeke and extend Zeke's career. I'm saying, he says he wants to manage Zeke's minutes. Okay, which means he wants to manage his carries. All I'm saying is if Zeke's at 30 carries, mm -hmm. 28, 30 carries, it's third and one, fourth and one. Okay. Are you going to say, well, you know what? Zeke's at that 30, 30 uh, uh, carry mark. Mm -hmm. We can't give the ball anymore. Yeah. Tony, get in there. Mm -hmm. You and I both know if Zeke Elliott's on that team. Well, obviously. Well, why, why are we even discussing that? That's just silly. That's completely well, off well, point. You call Jerry